Shoop. Okay. So, here's what this is. If I had this number here, let's start off kind of small. 4,000. It doesn't really make too much sense for smaller numbers, but we're just going to build. What is that? That's four times what? 1,000. 1,000. Like and this number is interesting because it's a certain number of tens, right? And our number system is based on 10 because we have 10 fingers. It's neat. So I teach a class, Math 120, I teach it sometimes where I teach you if we had eight fingers, what would our number system look like? It wouldn't have the number nine in it. It would be freaky self. All right, enough of that, Jeff. We won't talk about that here. Don't worry. Um, so it's, I, I pull those out because 10 is a very important number to me. How can I write 1,000 as something to a power? How many tens is that? Three. Careful, I know what you mean. It's, it's 10 times 100, but it's, which is 10 times 10 times 10. So it's 10 to the third. And look at a real quick way to see that. How many zeros are in this? Three. Holy shit. All right. Right. So if I had 1 followed by 28 zeros, that's 10 to the 28th power. That's too nice to believe. I like it. That is scientific notation right there. I always think of scientific notation as sort of a weird vampire. It sucks all the tens out of something. So 4,000 has three tens in it, so I suck them all out over here. Okay. Very strange way to look at it, and I don't care. It's just, I just happen to look at it. So, so, okay, notice how I had a number that was bigger than 10, and it's got a positive power answer. So what happens if I have something like this? First step on this is, how do I write that as a fraction? Oh, shit. What are the places here? Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So it'll be four thousandths. A thousand is ten to the third. You guys still with me? I like some of you guys like, yeah, keep going. Uh, now, now, go with me on this. See how those three tens are, have been flipped on the bottom? So what would it have been if it was up top? Ten to the negative, negative three. Right? If I force it back up, it's, gonna, it's not going to like it up there. So it's going to be negative three. Small number. Small number, negative power. Do you guys see that? I like it. So some of you guys that know scientific notation, you might be like, what the hell are you doing right now? I'm just showing you why it works. Now here's the shortcut. I don't have to do this. Where's the decimal currently? At the end here, right? And how many do I have to move it so I have a single digit in front of the decimal? One, two, three. Bam. Right, and it's a big number, so it's positive. I had trouble with left and right. I still sometimes do when I'm driving. Turn left, and I have to do this because it makes an L. Oh, that way. Okay, good. Give me a break. I got a lot of other shit in my brain. What do you want? From me? Um, so and it's kind of evil too, because it's like if you move it to the left, it's positive. But then when you want to take it back the other way, you got to move it to the right. Uh, it's crap. To me, it's easier. Big, positive. Positive, big. Hey, you look at it the same way. Small, uh, negative, negative, and uh, small. So, what does this mean? This means if I have. Now, here's the real reason we use signs of notation. Uh, if I have this number, 58 million, maybe there's 58 million miles between two planets, and I don't want to write all those freaking zeros all the time. What, uh, is it going to be positive or a negative power? Positive. positive. How many times do you have to move the decimal? Where's the decimal got to stop? I want to have a single digit in front of it. Where's the decimal going to stop? That's our time. Where's it going to stop? Yeah, one, two, three, so three, six, seven. So it'll be 5.8 times 10 to the seven. Hello. Kick ass. Yes, sir. Why do you write like the X for Oh, multiple? this is the one. I love it. Thank you. This is the one place. Scientific notation is a, a notation where I still use that old X. 
We know this is not algebra. This is scientific notation. So that does mean time. It's the one place we still use it. Some chemistry books, you'll see something like 3.1 times. Why would I not like this? Because it gets confused with the decimal point, right? So that's the one place we still use the x for times. I like it. So how would you do that here? You guys do this one. Say that's the distance between a proton and an electron in an atom or something. By the way, today, if you haven't noticed yet, today is a lecture-heavy day. I, don't, I try not to have too many of these days, but there's just a lot to go through chapter one. Tomorrow, we're going to do like a little group work thing that summarizes chapter one stuff. Uh, we'll start off with that. All right, so first question is, is it going to be positive or negative power? Negative. Negative. And then where's my decimal going to stop? Nine. Oh, where is it going to stop? Between the seven and the two, two right? I like it. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, looks like, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, wow. Uh, 70, 7.2 times 10 to the negative eight power. I love it. The gas, we know it's negative because it's a small number. I moved it eight times, so it's negative eight on the power. I love it. Yes, no, maybe so? So very often, when you're an astronomer or a chemist, you might say something, we, we use the terms on the order of. So I have something on the order of 10 to the negative 8. So we kind of know how small it is. This number is sort of like secondary. I have two stars that are on the order of 10 to the 7th kilometers apart. Okay, I get you. 10 to the 8th would be 10 times as far apart. I mean, it's a really quick way to talk about huge or small dis distances, for example. Right, maybe, maybe. Or describe the the uh, national debt, unfortunately, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Why aren't we including like the last zero to make it to the negative nine? Oh, oh, good. I love it. Uh, so, beautiful question. All right. So you're like, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Real quick word. Do you notice how if it's sent to the negative eight, there would be seven zeros? Because I'd have to go one more step to go there. You guys see that? It'll become important here in a minute. Um, so if I took this and I took it nine places, oops, nine places there, and I said the answer was this, I know it's wrong because doesn't 72 have a 10 in it? Seven tens and two. That's 72. It's got a 10 in it. That's why I need this to be a single digit decimal other digits times 10 to the something. It's got to be a single number between uh, 1 and 9. Does that sort of make sense? No. You're like, try again, dude. Uh, I think she meant, why don't we count the 0 to the left of the decimal point? Only because the last problem that we did, the, the 0 0.004, it was negative 3. I just thought you included the... Oh, but notice... All right, let me let me see. What if it was this? All right, now watch. That would be just like the other one. Because remember, the four, I only had a single digit, four. Okay. Here I got 72. Okay. So I still just go here and I stop. Even if there's more numbers after this thing, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I stop after a single digit because the whole idea is to take all the tens out of it and here this guy has a ten. Okay. Yes? So will you never see a scientific notation with like a double digit in the front? Or like seven You shouldn't. If it's truly it? scientific notation, no. Okay. Sometimes I know I, 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 scientific notation is uh, I, I a single digit in front of the decimal. 
there are situations where you want everything to have the same thing like this. So you have 5.8, 11 times 10 to the seventh, because you're forcing these to be the same. I might have gone too far there. You know, but, but scientific notation. Is this in scientific notation? No. This is just somebody wanting to compare these easily, so they made this the same, right? But is this in scientific notation? No. Why? The decimal is not in the right place. It should be here, right? I guess, you know, I might have gone too far there. Shit. All right. Okay. Um, so what can I use this for? Well, let me take a minute. You guys, let me shut up for a little bit. Uh, you guys do these. Convert these into scientific notation. And also, so convert to scientific notation. And then I'm going to be a couple to go the other way. See if you can handle that. Here we go. Obviously, I'm going to have group work in this class, but anytime I stop and give you some problems to work on, you can certainly discuss with people near you if you want to, or call me over if you need some help. Something like that happens, feel free, you know, just let me know ahead of time, but I'm not a stickler on, if something goes off, sometimes we need a musical intermission or something. That's just, there's only, that's the only one that'll go off, no matter if their phone is off or not. Okay. That's just her nurse letting me know. No worries. Thanks. Gotcha. Try catching up with you guys. This first one, positive or negative exponent? Positive. positive is big. And then the nice thing with the way we do these is it's little groups of three, right? Three, six, nine, yes. ten. So 4.872 times 10 to the 10. Take gas. 
Yes. So if you take a science class, they will talk about something known as uh, significant digits or significant figures. You've, has anybody ever heard of that before in, a, in like a chemistry class? All right, so some of you, some of you is in your future. Uh, and then there will be certain times when you might round this to a certain place. But if there's only this one instruction, then there's no reason to lose any of the numbers. It doesn't say round to some place or anything, so you just got to keep all the decimals. All right. So scientific notation doesn't make much sense if there, if all of these are numbers, because then you're, you're writing it just as long as you would have. It's kind of like it doesn't make sense then, right? So it's got to be some kind of rounding involved to make it make some kind of sense. Uh, what about this guy? It's definitely going to be a, a negative exponent, and you got to move. Now here's a quick way to do it. How many zeros are there? Four, and then one more place, right? So it'll be 1.02 times 10 to the Negative five. I like it. had to go around four zeros and then one number. Keep your ass. Less. So going the other way, is this going to be a small or a big number? Small, because it's a negative power. I want to move that way, whatever that way is. I like it. So I got to go one place to get around this stupid five, and then how many more times do I have to go back? Five more places, six total, right? I've already taken one step. I will need five more steps. How many zeros will there be in front of that? Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Five, zero, nine. And you put a little zero out there. Right, this is the same thing, right? But why do you think we do this? Like, I don't know why you people do it. Yeah, just to make sure, and it's just so I don't lose that decimal place, really. That decimal gets lost easy if I don't have something in front of it, if it's not between two things. Uh, and this guy's going to be a big ass number, right? So here, again, one, and then I go one, two steps. So now how many more steps do I got to go? Okay. Eight. So it's going to be eight. Okay. I got to go ten total. I've already taken one, two steps. So now it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you notice, it's, it's uh, the same kind of 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 10th. So you should end up with a number that in the same format as that. I like it. How's that? Is that cool? So you subtract the 2 from the 10? Exactly. i got to go 10 total steps. So if I take 2 steps, I still have 8 to go. It's just a quick way to figure out how many zeros you need. Makes the problem a little quicker. Instead of doing this evilness, 1, 2, then there's a 0, and then there's a 0, and then the Oh my god. Right? It's easy to get lost in that shit. All right. I like it. All right. How are you guys doing? You right? All right. If we keep going, I'm going to let you out a little bit early, so we're going to keep on going. You doing all right? You yeah. got to head out? Yeah. All right. Okay. Do what you got to do. Yes? On the second one, the bottom, why did we go like to get in front of one? We made it different. We made it Oh, I see. Why did it go a different direction? Yeah, the negative. Yeah, the negative, exactly. Because I really want this to make sense. If this is 10 to the negative 6, am I really multiplying? Where would those 10s go? They would go, I'm dividing. That's why a negative power makes it become a small number, because I'm actually dividing by that many 10s. Here, these 10 10s would stay up. I'm actually multiplying by that many 10s. That's why it becomes a big-ass number. So I like to think of it instead of left and right. Big and small makes more sense. I like it. Maybe if you like left and right, it's cool. You can do it that way. Okay. Uh, so there's one more idea I want to talk about today. It's section one seven, and then I'll mercifully let the class end for today. Uh, And, and just, if you can, try, you got to try to do some problems out of that chapter one review, and maybe even one six and one seven, so tomorrow you come with some questions, because it's the first thing I'll see if anybody has questions. kind of helps me figure out what I've got to go back over or not. So do that for me. All right. Um, one seven is kind of neat. 
Let me, let me start off. It talks about very specific kinds of sequences. So let me just talk about sequences in general. So for example, you've seen these kind of problems before, but we're going to get a little deeper into the math of them. Kind of makes sense. Uh, so what, what can you tell me about this sequence here? Like what would the next two pieces of that sequence be? 24, 29. Because what's the idea of that sequence? You can look at it two different ways, sort of. Yeah, you keep adding by five. Or you can even think about like you add 10, you add 10. There's a couple different ways. Both of those are the same, the same thing. One step is five, so two steps would be 10. So yes, this should be 24, 29. Blah, 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 blah. I love it. So you've seen these kind of things before, right? In fact, these things don't even have to be mathematical. What about this one? You can do it, Jeff. Oh, I like that one. So these are all letters. Let me help you out a little bit. How, how many letters do I have up there? How many letters do I have up there? I got, I got yeah, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, S, S for seven, E for A. I like that. Right. Okay, so the idea of sequence goes beyond mathematics, of course, right? You could talk about a sequence of, ma of musical notes. You could talk about a sequence of of letters, you can talk about a sequence of, of pictures. You guys kind of with me? So obviously we're probably going to kind of focus on the math ones, since that's the class we're in. Uh, so what about, let it go, I mean, that's this kind of problem would be evil for me to give you, because it's just got to be one of those, oh, that's what he means, instead of let me work at this, it's like, let me please come to me. So I wouldn't do that to you, but just to show you an example. What about this here? Uh, this was a little bit tricky. Especially if I don't do the math right in my head, but we'll see. Is it the same idea as this guy? Do I keep adding the same thing? Hell no. I keep multiplying the same thing. And what is it that I keep multiplying by? Negative 3. I love it. Not just 3. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 3 is 18. Times negative 3 is negative 54. Uh oh shit, times negative 3 is 162, times negative 3 is 9. Cool. I like it. You guys with me? Now again, the most important thing to me is that you identify this. The next important thing is that you do this correctly, you know, multiply correctly. But identify the process is more important. Okay, so let's, let's, let's um, and there's a lot of other ways to do sequences that get more and more complicated. We're going to keep with these two ideas for the most part right here. There is one more sequence I want to show you that's kind of remarkably nifty. Let me see if you guys, some of you guys might have heard this already. So if you know this one, maybe just sit on it for a second. And some of you guys are like, you're just making numbers up, man. What the hell? But no, there's an actual pattern to this. Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci oh, sequence. Okay. I like it. So you know about it, so hold, don't say anything. Has anybody ever heard of the Fibonacci sequence? Okay, good. If you read Da Vinci Code from all that, they had the Fibonacci sequence over the dead body and then, you know. I'm actually reading Inferno, the fourth book in the series. Oh, okay, there you go. So that's like one place in, in literature where it shows up. Uh, does anybody see the pattern that doesn't even know the Fibonacci? Can you just look at the sequence and see the pattern? What what you got? What is it? Uh, what the next number is? Well, what's the pattern? Uh, it's one to one is two, one to two is three, and two to three is five, five. Good, I like it. So then the next number would be? 55. 55, kick ass. Yes, ma'am. And if you actually plot it out on a graph, it's kind of like a Nautilus shell. I like it. Well, there's a little bit more involved to get there. Uh, there's something called a golden rectangle. 
where if you cut it in the right proportion. Real quick, real quick, just to show you a couple things. I could talk about this. We could have a semester class just on this, believe it or not. You know, like this is just some dude bored in an office that went, well, one and one is two. One and two is three. Good Lord. Two and three is five. It's amazing. All right, shit. But this thing defines natural processes. Uh, did anybody wake up to an alarm this morning? Okay, good. Me too. Uh, the frequencies that sound nice to our ear are frequencies that are in this list or that are ratios of things that are in this list. The alarm sound are nowhere near the numbers in this list. Those are the ones that are harsh. Eh, 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 you know, oh shit. So things that are aesthetically pleasing to us can actually be defined by numbers in this list. That is remarkably freaky. And it kind of makes sense. How does nature work? Like a little crab makes a little shell. A crab goes and eats some stuff. So what's the crab do? After it eats some stuff, it's going to... Yeah, it's going to... Going to grow. So then it needs to add on to its shell, right? And then it's going to eat more stuff and it's going to grow. Thankfully, at some point it stops growing or else we're in some 1950s B-movie. Oh, the crab that ate New York. You know. uh, but that's the idea. There's this thing about a golden rectangle where if you cut this in the right place and then you cut this in the right place and you connect to all the dots, you'll end up with this, what's called a, oh, well, that's actually an Archimedean spiral. It's kind of neat. Uh, I have a t-shirt somewhere that's got that on there. Can't wear it anymore because it's all holy. Not like religious, just full of holes. But, uh, no. All right. So they talk a little bit about the Fibonacci sequence. And what's really, really cool, for example, is if you had a tree, if you had a teacher that could draw, if you had a tree that nobody had cut and that it was it was healthy, then if you counted the branches, the branchings as you go up the tree, so this goes up and then it branches off some more. So one and then uh, two and then three and then five after that and so forth. If you count the branches across as it goes up, it's going to be numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, pine cone, I don't know if they talk about this in the book, pine cone seeds or the sides, as you count down the spiral on the side of the cone, it's going to show up in this, in, with these numbers. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it has to do with art, it has to do with music. If you go to Google and say Fibonacci anything, there's a Fibonacci method with stock market where you count the number of times that the stock market goes up and down, and it's going to predict when it's going to have a huge drop. And my friend Sean, who makes a lot of money, but he also has six kids, so he loses it very quickly. Uh, he made money when the stock market over the recession because he applied this algorithm. It's crazy. I am not selling you a book right now. <laughs> I don't have enough money to even try this out. But it's, it's Fibonacci. If you just type in Fibonacci surfing, Fibonacci music, Fibonacci sewing, Fibonacci what's your interest, Fibonacci guitar, Fibonacci whatever, it, it's, it's related to all of those things somehow. It's crazy. I like it. Oh, shit. Is it time? Maybe. How late do we go again? Oh, I just forgot. 25. Okay. You guys are better than me at that. Uh... All right, shit, I just barely got it. So we got to finish up that. So next time, uh, we'll start with, uh, we'll finish that up. We'll do a little group work activity, a little more lecture, and then we'll do our field trip tomorrow. What's up? Do you want these papers? No, you're good. I already put them in the computer that you, that you worked on. Two. Oh, what's this? No. Oh, so you didn't get a copy? I think I gave all mine away, but it's, uh, let me write my address on here. Just go, uh, oh, get out of there. Yeah, go to Gross Spot. Right, and then add in people, Jeff hyphen Waller. Right? And you, try, you click on the Mac 298 and there's everything, syllabus, homework sheet, all stuff. Okay, thank you. Sure. I just ordered my book, but it won't be done until my day. Will I still get kids by Monday? Yeah, of course. You have until the day of the test before it's late. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be out in November, like around 11. I'm going to be out in November, like around 11.
Something in a prison. Is there any before that? Is that a day of a test or something? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave on like a Wednesday and it'll be out Thursday. All right, so just remind me as we get closer because yeah. then I can, we can figure out when you can take a, a makeup test okay. and stuff like that. Okay. So just remind me when we get closer, okay, like a week to... out. All right. Yeah. Okay.